You ever find yourself shooting some what you think are amazing photos only to get home, blow them up, and realize that your photos are blurry, fuzzy, or just not as sharp as you'd hoped? You thought everything was going great, but now you have to drown your sorrows with another late night trip to Taco Bell so you can pick up a pair of Doritos Locos tacos and 32 ounces of pure Baja Blast. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> But once I started implementing these practices into my shooting, I started to understand what my problems were and why I wasn't getting the sharp photos that I wanted. Most importantly, if something was off, I had a step-by-step -step checklist to diagnose the problem and fix it before it was too late. In this video, we'll go over the three main reasons your photos aren't sharp, as well as one bonus tip to ensure that you get sharp photos every time from any camera. Let's start with the one that we're most familiar with, focus. Obviously, if we miss focus on our subject, our photos will not be sharp. So how do we make sure that we hit focus every time? Well, first, unless you're some sort of wizard, use autofocus. I use it 99% of the time because cameras are getting really good at hitting focus. Second, for your focus area, use single point or spot. This gives you a focus box that you can move around with either a joystick or a D-pad. Some cameras have a touch screen that let you tap on the screen where you wanna focus. This takes the control from the camera picking the subject to focus on and lets you choose. The one time you might want to try a different focus area is if you're shooting something super fast moving and your camera has a tracking mode. This lets you pick the subject and the camera will track it as it moves through the frame. But for anything that's not super fast moving, just use single point. Third, for your focus mode, use continuous. This will probably be labeled AFC or AI servo, depending on the brand of camera you have. And it will continuously focus on whatever is in your focus area. This works great when subjects are moving toward or away from you, making sure that your camera is constantly keeping your subject in focus. Lastly, if your subject has an eyeball, Focus on it. As grandma always used to say, the eye is the window to the soul. You're right, grandma. We as humans are drawn to the eyes. So if your subject's eye is out of focus, we perceive the photo as being out of focus. Who knew your grandma knew so much about photography? Way to go, Graham. A lot of cameras now come with an eye detect autofocus feature and most of them are getting really good. So if yours does, use that. So how do you tell if missed focus is the problem keeping your photo from being sharp? Well, it'll look something like this, where there is a clear part of the image that is in focus, it's just not the part that you want. The best way to check this while shooting is to make a habit of reviewing your photos and zooming in to make sure that your subject is in focus. Another tip with this is that the higher your f-stop number, the more depth of the photo will be in focus. This comes into play most when we're shooting more than one subject, usually, a group or groups of people. You might have a few people up to a few rows of people in a photo. And a good rule of thumb to start with is F2 or higher for couples, F4 or higher for groups, and F5.6 or higher for a group with multiple rows. There's one more tip related to aperture that will increase the sharpness of your photos, but I'm gonna save that for the end of the video. The second thing that leads to blurry or unsharp photos is movement. And this comes in two flavors. First, the movement of the camera, and second, the movement of your subject. So how do you know one from the other? Well, if the movement of the camera is the problem, your photo will look something like this, where everything looks blurry and streaky across the frame and nothing is frozen. So to fix this, we have two options. One, move the camera less by using stabilization like a tripod, or two, use a faster shutter speed to freeze the motion. Now, if the movement of your subject is the problem keeping your photo from being sharp, it'll look something like this, where there is a clear area of focus in your photo and your subject falls right there and should be in focus, but is still blurry. We get that fast moving things blur if not captured properly. I mean, look at race cars, airplanes, my toddler when it's bath time. Come here. You know, anything fast and unruly. So in order to freeze the motion of something moving really fast, we have two options. First, 
move the camera in the direction the subject is moving as it moves. This will make the apparent movement less and let you capture a photo where your subject is frozen. Usually this will result with a sharp and frozen subject with a blurry and streaky background. Or the more common way to solve this problem, again, just use a faster shutter speed. A good rule of thumb to follow here is for still subjects, use a shutter speed of at least one over two times your focal length. So if you're shooting on a 50 millimeter lens, at least one over 100. If you're shooting on a 100 millimeter lens, at least a shutter speed of one over 200. I personally don't like shooting handhelds slower than one one sixtieth of a second, unless I really need to, because I like caffeine and I am a shaky human. But back to the rule of thumb. For moving subjects, use a shutter speed of at least 1 400th. And for super fast moving subjects, use a shutter speed of at least 1 4000th. The third thing that will lead to blurry or fuzzy images is noise. And it's probably the one area of life where you don't want to bring the noise. If noise is the problem with your image, it will probably look something like this. Where everything looks muddy and what some people describe as grainy. Modern cameras are getting increasingly better at producing low noise at higher ISOs, but you're still going to get the cleanest image at your camera's base ISO, usually ISO 100. This is assuming there's enough light for your image to be properly exposed, so don't feel locked into shooting at ISO 100, but know that as you raise your ISO, more and more noise will be introduced. So how do you combat a noisy image? Well, this time you have three options. One, increase the aperture, if your lens lets you and it won't throw off your focus. Two, decrease the shutter speed, as long as it doesn't add motion blur to your photo. Or three, add light by moving your subject to a better lit area, using a flash, or using another light source. Now for the bonus tip. To get the sharpest photos out of the gear you already own, you need to know one thing. Most lenses are at their sharpest one or two stops down from wide open. So if your lens can go down to f2.8, it's probably at its sharpest at f3.5 or f4. If your lens can go down to f5.6, it's probably at its sharpest at f7 or f8. So if you've been shooting wide open on your lenses and it seems like your subject is still a little soft, try stopping down one or two stops. If you master focus, movement, and noise in your images, you'll be able to get hack sharp photos every time. If you want to learn even more about how to choose between ISO, aperture, and shutter speed to get the exact images you want in any scenario, check out this video. Otherwise, here's my real reaction to trying Doritos Locos Tacos for the first time. Here we go. It's really not that different than the regular taco. Oh, I need a little bit more. I mean, I'm a fan of the regular taco. I don't feel like this is a, worth a dollar more. But this part's fun. Do I feel like I'm living moss? Maybe a little moss, but not a dollar more moss.